Working with the recent events around kind of uh, gun violence and mass shootings and trying to think through this kind of how can I get to um, a new place, imagine a new future. Shred of a torn apostrophe. On May 27th, 2022, an 18-year-old gunman entered Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas and killed 19 children and two adults. Wake up the headlines, holes breathing through my shirt, salt off the rhythm of living, lick the poem's edge of metaphor, where ear bears the cost of shipping sweetness and sweat off luxury of living, a hole roughly the caliber of why sell this terror held up, rips right through the static quo to hear exactly as you thought. I trust the language to make a foam call from a landmine, make the sound tremble through a ditch when poetry arrives in the grizzle of meat meant to measure the size of pulp. My poem can hold nouns of all things. To stay alive, freedom, to stay alive, hand, charge, custody, title, ownership, control, sees an omission the size of this country's torn apart country that walks away, rattle, rake, snake, spat, ripped. I want to visit when the apostrophe's nearness falls a bucket of nothing will come of this. Preventable. Disappearances. Disappearance. Is poetry one kind of grieving? For children will finish being children when the sky can no longer be carried on a string. This one's about beer. Does anyone like beer here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I grew up in Milwaukee. Any High Life fans? Miller High Life? Yeah? Oh yeah. You've heard of it? Just once or twice? Once or twice. You've had it, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. A pallet or two, right? You've had one or two pallets. I like that. You're my kind of people right there. Ode to High Life. I think about the years getting teased for not drinking beer. Those years of being the odd man out man in quotes as not liking beer was a diminutive to one's manliness in Milwaukee. I didn't like the taste, the bitter, the chill, the pop as it slid down my throat. Bitter beer-faced follies and party tricks for my friends to regale others with, I didn't laugh. I never thought about it as a drink, but more as a smell in the air, that malt sweetness with yeast stickiness hanging in each nook and cranny on the drive downtown. I knew Miller as a person, as a place, as a life force long before I knew it as a drink or as a taste specific to the waters and German heritage the city had held to. For these generations, as the city changed and faltered, made its way of keeping others out on other sides of bridges that separated the city into ethnic and white. Where, by a form of racial magic, the Germans and Poles became freshly minted white, making those of us with names not Smith or ending in a ski, the newly baptized ethnic kid. I know the valley where on one side lies poverty and the other side, old houses now inhabited by elderly people hanging on and newly moved in couples renovating. I think about the high life that was promised to some and that most of us aren't living at all, scraping by on wages hard earned while others of us are killed off by the army or drugs or by the weight of all the shit sitting on their shoulders, soldiers every day to make it one more day without killing themselves. These beers and cigarettes are killing them they know. But it's only life we know and a fast pleasure to be garnered in the city where jobs are absent and I just want my family to be okay, to be alive, to find some life to live.
This is um, Sparrow's Eye. This is a situation that happened with birds, and some of us have those situations. I've had them since I was a child. So this piece is called Sparrow's Eye, and it too is in the book. And it happened at Jack London Square. One sunny Sunday afternoon, ascending stairs at Jack London Square on the courtyard, partially barred, I sit at its pinnacle. By bay the day of heat, my senses drink greedily. Vault of heaven, bright blue, swaddles, family hues, women, men, children, babies, eyes, laugh, talk, pleasing, folk walking, easy, winds blowing breezy. I lift my head towards skies when suddenly Sparrow graces my horizon, lands right in front of me, delivers another kind of peace. I feel silent, serene, when all at once its feathers flutter. My spine tingles, I shudder, like mirrors, we look directly into one another and cock our heads to the same side. A moment of unity confides. We share and stare. Then Sparrow flies and flies with a piece of my light and Sparrow's in me. Three days later, near my lap's end, another sparrow descends, so quick, so near, without fear, it was as if sparrow demanded I stop. So I did, as it hopped from my right to my left and looked up at me. Must be a kindred spirit, I think. Amazed, I looked down at this little miracle on the ground and sensed a heaviness, release. I feel lighter, a bit more free. Then Sparrow flies and flies with a piece of my light and Sparrow's in me. Now the next day, baby, the next day, more happens than I wish to say, but Sparrow's thing continued to play. Thursday night, open mic at Inner City's blues joint, I sat listening to poetry and prose as spoken word neared its close. A woman asked Inner City if she sh could sing. So she sang this very old song. Well, his eyes are on the sparrow. And I know he's watching. Well, I know sparrows have been watching me. Thank you. So the circle is home. And outside of the circle is the wide world, and I can see the wide world from where I stand, and it's full of all of these things. Unlocked doors and passing trucks to my dudes and hats that wave at you. And at home, inside the circle, I could see the knowing glare that doesn't exist in the wide world, where the miles change people inside and outside of a geo metro. And I know the whole world is the same place, but it doesn't look that way from here, because from here, I see different people drinking different beverages in a different climate. And they have glasses, and they walk with a limp, and they pay rent, and they do all of those things that we two on the porch do. They just do them differently. And their sun is a different sun than the one over California. And their streets are not paved with gold. Theirs are only paved with the dreams to which they can aspire. And from this porch, we'll practice and scratch, and from soon, we'll crawl to a different coast where the ocean is on the wrong side. And as far away as that might be, we can see our circle expand to encompass all those people who do not have that knowing glare and tend to stare at us too on the porch who become different people in each other's eyes and reach out to find that one thing that she calls just a piece of America and I find to be that peace of mind that has escaped all of my disquiet. But my disquiet turns to different unsettlings as the rain chases us around the rail of the porch and my pooch stares out of the rain-soaked windows, out of the rain-soaked streets, to the cars, streaking off to different corners of the world that might be Peru, or the Marin Headlands, or the coast of Antarctica, but are probably just quiet driveways leading to open doorways and warm arms within circles I know nothing about. While this circle, I feel so close as it streaks in a bubble across the face of this world. It's... <laughs>
intersecting all the other bubbles and bursting them with speed and confidence. The front seat of a Geo Metro is not the worst place to turn 19. <laughs> and a beast of mind gained through speed and distance isn't intended to evaporate when the engine stops running. And the cares of this world reflect off the windows of the bubble as the circles spin themselves into dreams that pave the streets with gold and shine like rain-soaked streets under orange street lights. And I would try to smile more, but my mouth is just too damn tired. Thank you. <laughs>